<coughs> oh no, baby, no. Mm -mm. Hey, so um, yeah, I'm gonna need you to put on a mask, or maybe you need to go home. Right. Do not bring coronavirus in here. I do not want to go back virtual. Well, actually, uh, I have medicine. They put me on antibiotics. Well, antibiotics are not for viruses. They're for bacteria. Uh, virus, bacteria, same old thing, right? Um, no, not in the slightest. Well, there are some similarities. So all living things are made of one or more cells, as they're the fundamental unit of matter. No, wrong class. Cells are the fundamental unit of life, and they all come from other cells. Well, the picture of coronavirus I just saw doesn't look all that different from bacteria. Well, it's not about what it looks like on the outside. It's about what's on the inside. <laughs> How cute. <laughs> or more so, what's not on the inside. Bacteria, fungi, cells from a plant, your cells, and coronavirus have one thing in common. Nucleic acids. What? COVID has DNA? Yikes. Not DNA, but RNA, which we'll learn about later. This genetic material helps your cells, bacteria, and coronavirus to replicate. But there's one problem. Coronavirus doesn't have these. Um, jelly beans? <laughs> no. These are called ribosomes. Ribosomes are an organelle. Just like you have organs, your cells have organelles. These ribosomes are very important because they decode your genetic material to make proteins, which are the building blocks that control everything that is physical about us. And bacteria have ribosomes too, but viruses don't. They need to hijack your cells to replicate. And that's one main characteristic that makes viruses non-living. Okay, so viruses aren't like me, but bacteria is? How? Well, you look like one. Okay, you smell like one. Okay, calm down. So bacteria are called prokaryotes, and you <laughs> are considered to be a eukaryote. Your cells and a bacterium both have DNA. You have ribosomes to make protein, and there's cytoplasm to hold in those ribosomes. And they both have a cell membrane to hold in all of that cytoplasm. But there are several differences. You're made of millions, well actually, trillions of cells. So are plants and fungi, and many protists are multicellular. However, prokaryotes are unicellular. While you could be infected by many bacteria, each bacterium, or prokaryote, exists as single-celled organisms, and all multicellular organisms are eukaryotic. Eukaryotic cells tend to be much larger and orderly, too. Prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells both have cytoplasm and ribosomes to decode DNA, but prokaryotic cells keep their DNA just floating around in the cytoplasm while eukaryotic cells, they have their DNA housed in the grand headquarter, the nucleus. Oh, so like the nucleus of an atom? Prokaryotic cells have no nucleus. And this is one of the clearest differences between the two. Oh. Even when looking under a microscope, the oh. nucleus can easily be identified and you will not find it in prokaryotes. Oh, okay. So like the big circle in the center, cool. But I see like, I see several things in there. Yes. Just like your body has organs that do several tasks for you, your cells have organelles that perform specific tasks too. We have mitochondria that produce ATP, endoplasmic reticulum that houses ribosomes to make proteins in the Golgi body and lysosomes. Oh, well, what about prokaryotes? Well, since they are so small, their DNA is not as extensive which makes them quite small and simple, so they don't need to have those organelles we just talked about. So, prokaryotes are basic. Mm, well, so is your outfit. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Got you. But their simplicity helps them to replicate quickly. And there's evidence that prokaryotes are the oldest and original forms of life on Earth. 
In fact, there's more evidence that suggests that mitochondria and chloroplasts were actually prokaryotes that were engulfed by larger cells millions of years ago. Wait, chloroplasts? I, I didn't hear that on your list earlier. Yes, there are two types of cells, prokaryotic and eukaryotic, but there are two types of eukaryotic cells, plant and animal cells. Plant cells have different structures oh, because- yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they have, have different, different functions. functions. <laughs> right. Plants can't get up and walk to the store when hungry, so they contain chloroplasts that use light to create glucose for energy. And they can't run to the water fountain when they're thirsty, so their cells have very large vacuoles to hold water and other materials. To keep this water inside and to keep their cells protected and rigid, plants, some fungi, and also prokaryotes have thick cell walls around their membrane as an extra barrier of protection and keeps them rigid and stiff. Most animal cells don't have any of those things, but they do have vacuoles, just not a large and central vacuole. So they're completely different. Well, no. Plants and animals differ mainly just in their use and retrieval of energy. But there are more structures that they have in common. They both have a central nucleus, that holds those nucleic acids we spoke about last week. Um, that was like a month ago. Mm -hmm. Those nucleic acids, DNA and RNA, provide the message to make proteins here at ribosomes that are in the cytoplasm. The ribosomes in the cytoplasm make proteins to be used inside of the cell, but the endoplasmic reticulum also houses a lot of ribosomes and it's usually connected to the nucleus. The what? Mm. Yes. What? <laughs> the endoplasmic reticulum. It has a rough version with the ribosomes on it and a smooth version. The smooth version synthesizes a lot of lipids for the cell membrane and the rough ER make very important proteins that need to be sent out of the cell to other places. How do they get out of the cell? Well, the Golgi apparatus or body packages them up and sends them out in vesicles. Sometimes waste is produced from all of this protein synthesis and old cell organelle parts. And these lysosomes help clean them up and dump them out of the cell too. Oh, so like how lysol? Yeah, we need some of that in here. We got a coronavirus floating all around. A lot of people coughing in there. Yeah. <laughs> all of these processes require energy and the mitochondria produce ATP, which the cell uses for energy to keep all of these things running. Wow. Mm, okay. okay, okay. So, coronavirus is not even close to what Matt has. That's actually a bacterial infection, strep throat. And while bacteria and viruses seem to float around interchangeably by you, your friends, and people who haven't taken biology yet, bacteria is much more complex than a virus but nowhere near as complex as your cells, which is why they tend to rely on us so much. Okay, well, I don't want either, so I'm putting a mask on. I care about my cells. Do you really think a mask will help shield you from a um, virus? Yes, it definitely does something. Right, what? That's been proven time and time again. Oh, uh, she's right, you know. Huh. Propaganda. Boy, spell propaganda. Uh. Mm-hmm. Right. <coughs> exactly.